Hello, my name is Arthur. In the last video, we did some modifications to our to our quotation search, changing it to a line-to-line -line search. I said we would come back and do escape sequence characters. And we're also going to look at our chars. So we have something like a basic char. Um, I've done escape sequence chars. And then there's some changes to certain characters, which I've, um, I've added this character to the to the regular quote search. So in the regular quote search, we had it able to find this character and this character. And now I've added this character because having it anywhere else proved quite complicated. So in addition to that, I've also made it so that certain invalid chars do not highlight and yeah i think that actually covers everything now this was way more difficult than i figured it would be and the idea of trying to write this script on a video is just outside of my skill abilities so that's not inside of my abilities what we're going to do instead is we're going to review the script so we'll just line this up so we can see both of these because we'll use some of this to explain the script. So up in the portion of the script where we um, do the search for quotes, all I had to do to add um, this symbol in was to add this. So when it looks for um here let's just type it out it looks for this symbol inside of the search for quotes and it looks for this symbol inside of the search for quotes and that one might actually be in two places now i'm not sure we could scan and take a quick look at that Um, no, I don't think it is. No. Anyways, so all I had to do was to add the or, and yeah, this check would find this slash. and um or this character so um where is that right there so that would be that check and yeah we covered this in the video that we first did the search for the quotes and then we did a video where we changed it to a line to line search but this is the whole addition to to be able to find this character in this routine. So it's not a big change here. So not a large change from the last video. So this was the function to find um, the format specifiers. We did this in video and it's basically the same that's finding the escape characters that are remaining to be found at this point so it's basically the exact same thing but certain characters needed to be omitted so this character it turned out had to be omitted um because for some reason it was getting confused looking for this character in double search Because technically this character has already been found by the search for chars. It was one of the special characters that needed to be found in the search for chars. 
So it's been excluded as well as um, other characters that prove complicated. And they're complicated. I think that the reason why they're complicated should kind of be clear because we're searching for slashes and we're searching for quotation marks. So why things, symbols made out of quotation marks and slashes would get confusing in this kind of search is kind of self-explanatory, really. So, yeah, this function is identical to the other function. Um, the only thing about it is it's selectively omitting certain characters so that we don't get overlaps and un undesirable behaviors. So we also have a set of characters that we search for um, inside of the char search. So these are the characters that need to be put inside of chars and that's done as the chars are being highlighted as chars. So we created a new color for the single quote. It's the same as the old color. And maybe part of the reason why this symbol was giving me hassles. Well, actually, it wasn't this symbol giving me hassles. It was this symbol in a char next to anything in the quote with a slash. And I don't know why that is. The behavior was um, a little inexplicable, actually, because technically, I don't think, according to the logic that was written, that should happen. And the reason that it did happen, I think, might actually have to do with the way that GDK sees the tag that is for quotes. And I'm not so sure that GDK is seeing the name quote tag as much as it's seeing the parameter that is identical because the behavior that I saw would indicate to me that it's not just, it's not looking at the name, it's looking at the characteristics. And that's the best explanation I could find for the odd behavior I saw. So we'll go through this and try to explain it. And yeah, this one was a little complicated for me, even though it's very similar to the double quote search. So we do the same things. We made the array. We gave a limit for the number of indexes in the array to iterate through it in a for loop. Initiate the page iters, make the tag, and remove the tag from the entire document because each time it comes through, it refreshes. We search for the quote using start and end iter. It's a line-to-line -line search, so we use line, and at the end, um, we have the same functionality as in the double quote search. So we're moving from the end of one line to the beginning of the other line, and then setting it to the end of that line with these two. And if it's reached the last line, after it's iterated through, it will hit here and break out because it's already gone over the last line. So that's the else to if check one. We check if um, we check that our single quote doesn't have the quote um, tag. We go into the while loop find the second instance. We check it doesn't have the quote tag. So it just excludes ones that are inside of quotes. And at this point, none of the chars have any tags. So, so my explanation for why quotes seem to be confused with single quote um, still holds in, in that logic. So the next thing we do when we get a result is we put scan to where start is at. 
and then we move it forward one cursor position. So we'll look at that in terms of our first result, which this is our first thing that we're checking for. That's a length of zero. So how that works is at the end of the search, we have start, iter, end. This one has not been seen yet. It hasn't been found yet. It finds the first one. It finds the second one start, iter, end. We put scan here, we move it forward one cursor, so now we have start, scan, iter, end. The length difference between iter and scan is zero. So we're doing a offset calculation of iter minus scan, and in that event it would be zero. So we get the char at end, so start, iter, scan, end, it gets this char. If it finds that char, it goes, okay, that's not a valid character. So start, iter, scan, end, finds a character that makes it an invalid char, moves forward one cursor position with end. The search begins from here forward, ignoring these three. So that's zero. Okay, so we have, if length equals one, we go, um, let's see, this is a length of one, and x is a length of one. So, we get the value at scan. So, start, scan, iter, end. We get the value at scan. It does not equal a slash. So, it comes down to else, applies a tag. It's found a valid char. Um, it, so, start, scan, iter, end. We get the value of scan. It's found something invalid, but it's not necessarily an invalid char. So it comes down and it looks for this at the value of n. So start, scan, iter, end. If it finds nothing, there's if it found this, or there's nothing. So it just falls through and does nothing. End is where it belongs and it will carry on with the search. Or start, iter, scan, end. It finds this. So it finds this. It moves iter and end forward a space. So start, scan, iter, end. Iter becomes end, end becomes here. It marks the quote at start and end, start and end, and specifier at scan and iter. So that's, um, that's if the length is equal to two, or one, I should say. So that brings us down to length equals two, and that length equals two these are the situations we're looking for. It will um, iterate through the array. If it finds something, it will mark it. If it doesn't find something, it will treat it as an invalid char. So, invalid char, whereas valid char. So that's how that function works. Um, this is just a basic loop to search through. And I don't know, maybe there's merit to simplifying these other searches to be um, a little more straightforward than they are. Or, or maybe the idea of limiting it, limiting it in this fashion is the best way. I'm not really sure on that one, because, like, I 
will um, keep pointing out. I'm only learning C by um, <laughs> making syntax highlighting. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully my explanation of that is clear. Um, it, it was too complicated for me to try to write out in a video though, and it took me a while to figure this out and debug it all to get it working. So I hope it was helpful, and in the next video we'll probably come back and start doing keywords, and we'll distinguish between types and these types of keywords so we have sort of have different kinds of keywords and then for a last thing we'll get into this which is a little more difficult the preprocessor especially include the other ones are really quite simple but include is to get it to behave the way the software does is is also a little bit complicated so anyways, that's what I've got now. It seems to be working pretty good. Um, I think that everything is still working. It's not even that tremendously slow considering the, the ridiculously ginormous function that I've written here because that's kind of a silly big function. But yeah, this is just an attempt to get things working and then to get them working in an optimal fashion that's another story entirely so that's it for this video until the next video take care